Hello, and welcome to Big Lagoon. I'm Troy, a biologist, and today, a fungi enthusiast. Big Lagoon is a beautiful wildlife area that hosts a variety of plants and animals, including some amazing mushrooms. We're not going to harvest any mushrooms today, just look for them and learn about them. Before we start, I want to give you a quick warning. Mushroom hunting can be fun and rewarding, but it can also be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Some mushrooms are poisonous, some are edible, and some are hard to tell apart. Never eat a mushroom unless you are 100% sure of its identity and edibility. And always consult a reliable guidebook or an expert before you pick any mushroom. One of the first mushrooms we spotted was Clavulina coralloides, also known as the white coral fungus or the crested coral fungus. This is a white to cream colored edible coral mushroom that can be recognized by its cristate branch tips, which are flattened and feature several tiny points. It's a mycorrhizal mushroom as well, and it grows on the ground or on rotten wood under coniferous and hardwood trees. Clavulina coralloides is the type species of genus Clavulina, which is related to chanterelles and hydenum repandum. It has a mild taste and a tough texture, so it's not very appealing as a food source, but it's a fascinating mushroom to observe and study. I like it because it looks like the font of metal band names. A fungus that caught my eye was Paziza vesiculosa, also known as a blistered cup fungus. This is a common species in Europe, with scattered records in other parts of the world. It has a pale, cup-shaped fruiting body that can grow quite large, up to 10 centimeters in diameter, and often forms densely packed groups. It grows on nutrient-rich soils, rotting straw and manure, and can often be seen on compost heaps. It is considered poisonous, so do not eat it. This fungus reproduces by releasing spores from the inner surface of the cup, and helps decompose organic matter and recycle nutrients in the soil. They look pretty similar to an octopus suction cup, while we were looking for mushrooms, we interrupted the lunch of this gentleman, Tamascurus douglasi, also known as the Douglas squirrel, the chickadee, or the pine squirrel. This is a small, agile, and vocal squirrel that lives in the coniferous trees of western North America, from California to British Columbia. It has a reddish-brown to grayish-brown coat, with a yellowish-orange belly and a black stripe across its sides. It also has a bushy tail with a black tip and a reddish-brown underside. In winter, its coat becomes more gray, and it may have ear tufts in the northern part of its range. One of the places I wanted to visit in Big Lagoon was a bog that my friend Charlie had told me about. She said it was a hot spot for rare and interesting plants and animals. Unfortunately, the road to the bog was flooded due to the recent rains, and we couldn't get there by car. We decided to explore the nearby forest instead, hoping to find some fungi there. One of the mushrooms we found in the forest was Mycena orantio marginata, also known as the golden-edged bonnet. This is a small, delicate mushroom that grows on the floor of coniferous forests, especially under hemlock, fir, or cedar trees. It has a bell-shaped to conical cap, up to two centimeters in diameter, that is dark reddish-brown in the center and paler towards the margin. The gills are white to grayish olive, with bright orange edges that give the mushroom its name. The stipe is slender, hollow, and reddish-brown, with yellow to orange hairs at the base. This is a Helvella species. I don't know which one, but it's related to morels. The spores will come out of this top part, not underneath like most fungi. And it's got this really cool stipe with holes, and it has a really cool cross section if you cut it in half. It's not a solid log like a mushroom. Here's a tiny cup shaped fungus that we found on Big Lagoon Beach. This is Cyathus ala, also known as a field bird's nest. It looks like a miniature bird's nest with tiny eggs inside. But these are not eggs. They are spore-containing structures called prideolus. They are attached to the cup by a thin elastic cord called a funiculus. When a raindrop hits a cup, the prideolus are ejected out of the cup, and the funiculus helps them to stick to nearby plants or soil, where they can germinate and produce new fungi. This is how the fungus disperses its spores. The banana slug, a vibrant yellow creature found in the Pacific Northwest, is one of the world's largest and slowest slugs growing up to 25 centimeters and moving at speeds of 6.5 inches per minute. With a distinctive yellow body resembling a ripe banana, it inhabits the moist forests from California to Alaska. As a herbivorous slug, it feeds on plants, fungi, and organic matter using a radula with tiny teeth. We discovered the Amanita vaginata, or Grisette Amanita, an edible mushroom in the Amanitaceae family, recognized by its gray or brownish cap with furrows, matching the gill pattern underneath. It lacks a stem ring, but has a loose, sac-like vulva at the base. This mycorrhizal mushroom forms a symbiotic relationship with trees like oak, beech, birch, and pine, aiding in nutrient absorption. 
Although edible, Amanita vaginata is not popular for consumption due to its bland taste and slimy texture. So this is a lactarius and you can tell that because of the milk coming out when you cut it. Fresh specimens most almost always will do that to some degree. Um, and this one's interesting because it's a look-alike for a common edible called candy cap, which smells like maple syrup, but because the cap is slimy and the milk is very opaque white, this is not a candy cap. And if I were to chew a little piece and spit it out, it might also help me ID it by being spicy and peppery. I can do that if you want. Sure. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a few seconds. This one is spicy, not terrible. Sometimes they're like, holy crap, get this out of my mouth immediately. But this one is spicy, not too bad though. The chew and spit test is safe for just about anything. It's most useful with this genus and with Russula, but technically speaking, you can do this with any mushroom. I don't do it to the Amanita genus because I'm afraid of them, but I've seen a video of someone doing that and he lived. But my official recommendation, I guess, is don't, but Lactarius, Rosula, chew it and spit it. Just make sure you do spit it. We found Ampeloclitocybe clavipes, also called the clubfoot or clubfooted clitocybe, a grayish brown mushroom with yellowish decurrent gills and a bulbous stem. Growing under conifer or hardwood trees, it has a mild, nutty flavor, but it can cause disulfiram like reactions when consumed with alcohol. Belonging to the Hygroforaceae family, it's saprobic. This mushroom, rich in coprine, interacts with alcohol metabolism, causing nausea. This is Hygrophorus arubsens, also known as the blotched woodwax, or pink wax cap. This is an inedible mushroom that grows in the coniferous forests of Northern America, Europe, and Asia. It has a light pink to white cap up to eight centimeters in diameter. It often has darker pink or red spots or bruises. The gills are white to pale yellowish, but they also get reddish marks or turn pinkish over time. The stem is whitish, but it can also have pinkish to reddish discolorations and sometimes bruises yellowish in places. Hygrophorus arubsens is a mycorrhizal mushroom, meaning it forms a symbiotic relationship with conifer trees such as pine, fir, spruce, and hemlock. It helps the trees to absorb water and nutrients from the soil, and in return it receives sugars and other organic compounds from the trees. It is one of several species of hygrophorus that develop pink to reddish spots and discoloration on the gills, which may be a result of a chemical reaction with oxygen or a defense mechanism against predators. It is also a variable species, with different forms and colors depending on the habitat and season. Thanks for watching. Let me know your favorite mushroom in the comments, and if you learned something new, please give the video a like. Did I botch the names? Let me know. Also, a huge thanks to my friend Charlie for bringing me on this trip and identifying the mushrooms.